This is Sandro Chiki, billionaire co-founder and CEO of genomics company 23andMe. And once said in an interview that she gets parking tickets all the time, but that she doesn't mind. Anne had crunched the numbers and decided that the freedom for her to park however she wanted outweighed the downside for her of getting fines. For Anne, breaking the law when it came to parking had nothing to do with ethics or morality, it was all about maths, and the maths showed that breaking the law ultimately was worth it. This video is not about Anne Vucicchi or about parking. This video is about companies that, like Anne, decides that breaking the law ultimately can be worth it. In this video I will talk about the controversial merger between Illumina and Grail. Illumina is the world's leading DNA sequencing company and coincidentally it's also an important supplier to Anne Vucicchi's company 23andMe. Anne once said that Illumina is like the ruler of this whole universe and no one knows that. Last year Illumina announced that it is spending 8 billion dollars to acquire Grail a biotech company backed by billionaires Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. Grail's main value and the reason Illumina is paying 8 billion is Grail's pioneering product Gallery, a groundbreaking cancer detecting blood test. This product Gallery wasn't launched until this summer, which means that until now it has been a so-called pipeline product that hasn't yet generated any significant revenues for Grail. And I will get back to why that matters in this case. Competition regulators around the world are not happy about this proposed merger between Illumina and Grail. In the US, the Federal Trade Commission has sued Illumina in court to stop the merger, claiming that the merger risks eliminating all competition for cancer screening blood tests for more than 50 types of cancer, and furthermore that this transaction would be the equivalent of pursuing one single COVID-19 vaccine. Also in Europe, the Illumina Grail merger has raised serious concern among regulators and that is what I will focus on for the rest of this video. In the European Union, the various member states have merger control rules of their own, but the EU merger control law gives the European Commission sole jurisdiction to review bigger mergers. To determine if a merger is big enough to fall within the European Commission's jurisdiction, EU merger control law has a system that sets out certain thresholds that are based on the turnover or sales of the merging companies. To simplify, if both parties to a merger has significant turnover in the EU, then the merger falls under the European Commission's jurisdiction. But if one or both of the parties to the merger have low turnover, then the European Commission has no jurisdiction. Ever since the adoption of the EU merger control regime, Lawyers and politicians have warned that these turnover-based thresholds are not that great and that they risk leading to a regulatory gap. The critics argue that significant mergers that actually do affect competition within the Union can go through without scrutiny from the European Commission simply because one of the parties to the merger does not meet the EU's turnover-based threshold. For example, critics have argued that the turnover thresholds can let acquisitions of significant digital startups slip through. Let's say a huge global tech company acquires an important startup that offers an app with vast numbers of users. Arguably this acquisition could affect competition within the union, but if the startup as of yet has offered its app for free, then it may have no turnover and then it will not meet the turnover thresholds for review. The turnover thresholds have also been argued to let certain acquisitions of biotech companies slip through. If a biotech company has a very important pipeline product but has not yet started to generate turnover, then this biotech merger could slip through since the merger does not meet the turnover thresholds. And if you recall, this was the situation for Grail. Grail's main product, Gallery, was a pipeline product that had not yet been launched. Therefore, Gallery had yet to generate significant revenues for Grail. This also meant that the merger between Illumina and Grail did not meet the European Commission's turnover thresholds. Furthermore, the Illumina Grail transaction did not meet the thresholds for review in any of the member states, meaning that there was a risk that the Illumina Grail would slip through without being reviewed by any European competition authority. But, as it happens, the EU merger control regime does have an obscure fail-safe provision designed for this situation. This provision, Article 22, does allow the European Commission to review certain transactions that otherwise would not meet the merger control thresholds, even if the merger is not reviewable in any member states, provided though that one or more member states requests that the European Commission initiates a review. 
Remarkably, the European Commission's practice has been to discourage member states from invoking Article 22 for mergers that are not reviewable in that member state. However, in response to the criticism that the EU merger control regime has received over an alleged regulatory gap, the European Commission's Competition Commissioner, Margrethe Vestager, said outright in a speech last year that the European Commission is changing its policy and now intends to start using the Article 22 failsafe when warranted. The Commission has a practice of, uh, of discouraging uh, national authorities from referring cases uh, to us which they didn't have the power to review themselves. The time has come to, to change our approach. And we plan to start accepting uh, referrals from national uh, authorities uh, of mergers that are worth reviewing uh, at a European level, whether or not uh, those authorities have the power to review the case themselves. And after Illumina announced that it was acquiring Grail, this is exactly what the European Commission did. Several countries, France, Belgium, Greece, Iceland, the Netherlands and Norway, had requested the European Commission to use the Article 22 failsafe to review the Illumina Grail transaction, and the European Commission pulled the Article 22 trigger to initiate a review. And during its initial review, the European Commission also identified preliminary competition concerns with the merger and opened an in-depth investigation that is still ongoing with a deadline set for the last quarter of 2021. A key feature of the EU merger control regime is that a so-called standstill period applies during the time when the European Commission is reviewing a merger. The standstill means that the merging companies are not allowed to close the transaction before the merger has been cleared. If merging companies do close transactions during the standstill, in other words before clearance from the European Commission, then this is referred to as gun jumping and it could result in fines of up to 10% of the annual turnover of the gun jumping company. And here comes the point when Illumina decided that potentially breaking the law ultimately was worth it. The risk of fines notwithstanding, Illumina decided to jump the gun. Illumina recently decided to simply disregard the standstill obligation and to close the transaction of Grail, even though the Commission's review is still ongoing. Illumina claims that they will treat Grail as a separate entity until the Commission's review is over. A few days after Illumina jumped the gun, Margrethe Vestager issued a statement that the Commission deeply regret Illumina's decision to close the transaction during the standstill. The European Commission immediately initiated an investigation into whether this constitutes illegal gun jumping. This gun jumping investigation will take place independently of the Commission's review of the actual transaction. This case raises a whole host of important and interesting questions. First, arguably it's way overdue to amend the European Commission's strict turnover thresholds. Should the European Commission really have to invoke a failsafe provision to review mergers that obviously have huge potential implications for the future, such as an $8 billion merger with potential effects for cancer research innovation? Instead of relying only on turnover, the jurisdictional thresholds could take into account also deal value or market shares. Second, when Illumina made the decision to close the transaction of Grail, despite the European Commission's ongoing review, Illumina knew that it was likely that the European Commission would try to fine the company of up to 10% of Illumina's annual turnover. That should mean up to $324 million in fines, which is a lot. But recall that Illumina is paying $8 billion to acquire Grail, a sum that dwarfs the level of the fine. The gun jumping fine was part of Illumina's cost benefit analysis when deciding to potentially break the law, and in that assessment, Illumina still considered it worth doing so. Arguably, this shows that the procedural sanctions set up by the law are not deterrent enough and must be revised. We cannot allow a situation where getting fined for intentionally infringing EU law is merely a cost of doing business for some companies. Third, it will probably take years before the Commission's investigation into Illumina Grail's gun jumping is resolved. During this time, we will see immense pressure from the big tech lobby and other lobbies to stop the Commission from using the Article 22 failsafe. The lobby group CCIA, with backers such as Facebook, Google and Amazon, are already all over the Illumina Grail transaction and has filed brief in support of Illumina. Why is the big tech lobby obsessing about a biotech merger? Well, for 20 years, the big tech industry has built immense market power by swallowing numerous tech startups. The big tech companies have also been able to complete many of these acquisitions without any scrutiny from the European Commission. But Article 22 could change that, as it does allow the European Commission to review almost any transaction. That probably terrifies the big tech firms. 
Hopefully this case will spark an ethics debate. Does Illumina's behavior constitute heroic civil disobedience and righteous judicial activism? Or is Illumina's behavior an affront to the European Union and its member states, orchestrated by corporate brats who consider themselves above the law? What do you think?